Hello, this is your AWD Spring Dude from the land of Israel. Today we are about to discuss Esau Edom and uh, what became of him and who he became and his interaction with Israel. And this is worth knowing. This is an important uh, aspect of the Bible. This is part of the biblical history. It's part of the biblical narrative. In rabbinical thought, it is important. It is important for the end times. It is important in biblical prophecy to understand it. Who was Edom? Uh, Esau uh, plays a, a prominent role in the end time wars of Esau. And uh, incidentally, it also gives us an additional tool whereby we may understand who the Lost Ten Tribes are and how they, their role in history, the role in world civilization is played out. Esau, also known as Esau, in Hebrew his name is pronounced as Esau, was the twin brother of Jacob. Jacob is also known as Esau. Esau and Jacob were twin brothers. Abraham was the first Hebrew. After Abraham came Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. He married Rebekah. In Hebrew, Rebekah is pronounced as Rivka. Uh, Rivka, Rebekah. She was barren at first, so Isaac prayed for her that, that she should uh, be able to bear children, and his prayers were answered. And we hear about this in Genesis chapter 25. It says that Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife. Beginning from verse 21, Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. The Lord granted his, his plea and Rebekah his wife conceived. The children struggled together within her. The children within her womb, they, they fought with each other. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to inquire of the Lord. Apparently there were prophets or holy people in that time and she went to ask them what is the meaning of what is going on within her body. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, two peoples are destined to come out of the, your, your womb uh, uh, from the children you will bear. Uh, two peoples are, shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. She had twins. The first came out the red, he was like a hairy garment all over, he had hairs all over him, he was reddish. Uh, and so they called his name Aesop. Aesop in Hebrew is based on the root Asa. Asa, Asa, in other words, uh, connotes completion. Something was already formed, he was a precocious, he had precocious development, and he came out as a complete being, as one, one could say, Aesop. This also reflects something on his future character, that something is already complete. He is a perfect person. He's a superman in his own way. Uh, this is uh, worth noting. Uh, and at all events, the same, Aesop was a name given unto him. And after Aesop, after when his brother came out, his hand took hold of Aesop's heel. The other child, the brother came out, and he's holding on to the heel of Aesop. In Hebrew, the heel is called Akav. Akav. So Yaakov, which is in Hebrew meaning Jacob, Yaakov is like something that was uh, grabbing hold of the heel. That's how it can uh, literally mean. It also has connotations of somebody who will overtake something. It also as uh, will, uh, coming from behind, he overtakes someone else. It also has connotations of deceit, of deception, of trickery. And uh, these different connotations of his name were all uh, all had significant, see, all had significance in his life. Afterwards, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, so his name was called J Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore them, so the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. That is how the Hebrew is translated. And uh, more or less that is what, the, what it means. That is what the, the simple meaning of the verses. Afterwards, the name of Jacob was changed to Israel. See Genesis 32, 28, 35, 10. Whereas Esau was also known as Edom. Edom means red. Uh, see Genesis 25, 30, 32, 3. 
36.1, 36, 36.19. Edom was also known as Esau. Esau is another name. Edom is another name for Esau, whereas Israel is another name for Jacob. Edom was a twin brother of Jacob, but he became his mortal enemy and he wished to kill him. As said Genesis 27, 41 to 42. Jacob, as we said, was renamed Israel. And he begat the 12 tribes of Israel. From the descendants of Israel, we have the Jewish people and we have the lost 10 tribes. Our researchers have indicated, they have actually proven to a reasonable degree that the lost ten tribes, that is a good, the major portion of the Israelite nation, are to be found amongst Western nations. Uh, they don't know who they are, they're not aware of their ancestry on the whole, but that is where they are. They were exiled by the Assyrians, lost consciousness of their ancestry, but somehow either physically they remained a coher as coherent entities, the coalesced or recoalesced, unified with each other, stayed together to some degree, uh, or reunified with each other after a time. And uh, we find these peoples amongst Western nations. And they are the lost in tribes of Israel, and the biblical uh, prophecies prove this. So, do, so does secular evidence based on rabbinical sources, based on mythology, archaeology, linguistics. Numerous fields of study that finds from which all come together and all indicate the lost ten tribes are amongst Western nations. And uh, they are the major tribes, the major tribes amongst the lost ten tribes of Israel are those of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, but the other tribes are also important. And they had an interplay, they interacted with the Aesog, with the Dom throughout their history. These uh, ten tribes had been conquered by the Assyrians. The Assyrians took them away into exile. Most of them took over land to areas in northern Syria in the Caucasus region, and from there they later moved northward into southern Russia and from or through by Turkey into southeast Europe. From different pathways, they eventually migrated to Western Europe. Another section of them were taken away by boat to the uh, British Isles, to Spain, to Scandinavia, to different areas, and they were taken away with, via agents uh, working on behalf of the Assyrians. These agents were Phoenicians, Phoenicians from Tyre, and also Philistines, Philistines in, in, who are identified there in archaeological terms by, by um, uh, fine, uh, so-called Mykenian uh, archaeological evidence and also Min Owen from Crete. Actually emanating from the Philistines and the, the Phoenicians who were in the land of Israel. The book of Amos castigates the Edomites. The book of Amos chapter 1, he castigates, he proves the Edomites having been instrumental in the exile of Israel and uh, for having acted in effect as uh, the instrument of resettling the exiled tribes of Israel. So we see from this, from this Amos, that uh, Edom was an agent, was an important factor in the exile of the ten tribes. The Edomites were to be found in different areas, different areas of the Middle East. Uh, Aesop, the forefather of of uh, Aesop, the forefather of Edom, of, of the Edomites, he had a number of wives, Hittite wives, uh, Ishmaelite wives, wives from different areas. And he gave rise to several, several agents and to groups, uh, military elites throughout the Middle East, in addition to which there was a country known as Idumea to the Romans, Edom in the Bible. Edom was to the southeast of Judah, or the south and the east of, of Judah. And uh, this area of Edom was where a portion of the descendants of Edom were to be found, but they were also to be found in other areas. One of the clans of Esau Edom was the Temenu, descendant of Teman. They also referred to as Tumana, they were in uh, Anatolia, was known as Anatolia, that is the uh, Asiatic side the, of Turkey, present day Turkey. They were also to be found um, as Temenu in Babylon and in other areas, also in uh, what's now Persia, 
and uh, Central Asia. We also have area elements of this people that were spread in several areas. They were noted for their wisdom and intellect. See Jeremiah 49.7. Uh, Job, Job, the book of Job. Job came from the land of Oz. See Job, uh, Job uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And this land of Uz was identified with the Dom in the Bible, see uh, Lamentations 4.21. So Job himself may have been a descendant of Edom, and Eliphaz was one of his three friends who came to, discuss, to talk with him, to comfort him, or to argue with him. He, Eliphaz was from Teman, he too was a descendant of Teman, he too may have been a descendant from, uh, of Edom, see Job 2.11. Eliphaz is also the name of the firstborn son of Esau. See Genesis 36, 4, 36, 10. And uh, we find it, or should it be done throughout the Middle East, the researcher Mikhail Benai, a, G a German researcher of note. He identified an area referred to in the Syrian writings as Adam Uris as the land of Edom. And this, uh, this was an, an area in northern Syria. Also, we have in the Bible, in Genesis thirty-six, thirty-seven, it speaks of various kings who were descended from Edom, who reigned in the Middle East at different times. And one of them, Shaul of Rehoboth, he was, um, he was, uh, he reigned in the region of the Euphrates, which was far to the east and the north. So they were spread out. They were spread out at an early time, at an early stage. In addition to having a, a little land of their own to the southeast of Judah, Edom was also associated with the Phoenician city of Tyre the, on the coast. The Phoenicians were peoples, Canaanites, who dwelt in cities on the coast of Lebanon and Israel and Syria. The two major cities were Tyre and Sidon, and uh, Tyre was. Uh, populated by people from Canaan and from Israel and also from Edom. It had two sections, to the, there were two sections to the city of Tyre, one was on the coast, the other was on an island in the sea. The coastal section of Tyre was known as Ushu, which was a form of the name Esau. Also, according to their legends, the, the, the were, Tyre was built by two twins, one of whom was known as Usus, which is another form of the name Esau. Also, the, the historian Sir William Drummond, in 1826, he wrote that the name, very name Phoenician is from the Greek phonix, and it, is, it denotes phoenix, it denotes red, and it, it's the same meaning as Edom. And he, and he also identified the inhabitants of Tyre as the Edomites. There was also a legend of, uh, by, uh, in Greek sources saying that the first king of Tyre was known as Erythras, which is also similar or based on the root meaning Edom, meaning Ered. Islet Sam, Samis, or Islet Samis, Britannia Antiquia in 1674, he was basing himself on Latin and Greek sources, also on a French researcher known as Samuel Bocard, who wrote a little bit before him. He relates to the Phoenicians who were amongst the early settlers of, of, uh, of Britain, along with other peoples, and he um, identifies uh, Idumea, the people of, of Tyre as Udumeans, Idumean Tyrians, Idumeans from Tyre. And uh, he finds them amongst the settlers of Britain, and there's something to this, because the Edom, according to uh, Amos, helped the, or was the, a proxy, an agent of, of the Assyrians in resettling Exiles from Israel in western areas, and in these western areas, they, they, their task was to uh, mine, to work in the mines, work in the copper mines and the tin mines of Cornwall, the copper mines of Wales, and of Ireland, and of Spain, and also in Spain to manage uh, agricultural uh, estates to, to providing uh, foodstuffs for the Syrian Empire. And uh, this was part of the uh, of a relocation of the Assyrian complex. And Israelite slaves, or Israelite uh, um, indentured workers, were an important factor in this. Also, we have the book uh, Chronicles of Uri, written by Roger O'Connor in 1822. He brings together Irish sources and he also shows how, according to their sources, 
exiles, he does not identify them as Israelites, but he gives enough indications to, to indicate that they are of Israelite descent, and they were Hebrews, were taken into servitude by Phoenicians and made to work in Spain on the Phoenician, on behalf of the Phoenicians, on behalf of the Syrians, and they eventually uh, asserted their independence. They rebelled and they moved out, and they moved out to Ireland and to the British Isles. And this is corroborated by other sources. This is uh, this is a, a point also by archaeological findings, as we have shown in our works. This is correct. Just as we find Israelites. In the West, later moved to the West, so do we find Edomites. We find Edomites elsewhere. We indications are the early civilizations of uh, of India, the early civilizations of Japan, of China, possibly of other areas had uh, Edomite input in them. We're not saying that the people there are Edomites. We are saying that amongst the small group of of uh, foundational elements who founded the nation. Edomites were present. They were present in many areas, and they contributed towards the foundation of these uh, of these towards the foundation of these countries. Edomites also have found Rome. See Russia, Russia in Genesis thirty six forty three, and in Midrashim and throughout the sages had, had a very strong tradition concerning this that the Edomites helped found the civilization of Rome. The Romans apparently, according to these same sources, were aware of this, were actually proud of it. So this too is worth taking into consideration. Edomites were important eh, among, eh, amongst the Europeans in the early days. In the blessing to, uh, that Isaac gave to his sons, he first he blessed, uh, he intended to bless Esau, but Jacob uh, disguised himself as as Esau and came in and took the blessing instead of him. And then Esau, when he discovered this, he was somewhat distraught and he begged his father to also give him a blessing. See Genesis twenty seven thirty eight. It says, And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew from heaven. And the Jew of heaven from above, by your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. Esau was destined to be a military person, uh, to give rise to military elites, to establish civilizations and empires. Some come to pass when you become restless, that is, you separate from yourself, move away, you, you shall overcome, and you shall break his yoke from your neck. At first he would be subjected to Israel, as indeed the Edomites were. They were subjected to Solomon, and the king, they were subjected to David and Solomon, afterwards to the other Israelite kings, but eventually they asserted themselves, and they became the foundational elements of empires, such as, uh, such as ancient Greece and the empire of Rome. In the future, Edom shall come to a bad end. It says in Jeremiah 49, 15, For though I'll make you small among the heathen and spice among men. In the book of Avijah, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, I will surely make you least among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. The sages in the Talmud, Megillah 6, they uh, may be understood according to the explanation of the Gra, Rabbi Eliyahu of Vilna, they said that uh, Rome and German ni are nations that emanate from Edom, that Edom, Esau, was important in founding these nations, both of them. And if they ever united, they would uh, attempt to destroy the world. Now, this does not mean that everyone in those pe amongst those peoples was a sin from Edom. It, it means that Edomites were there. They were there. They played a part in it. They influenced the national characteristic, characteristics, the national characteristics of these peoples. Amongst the Germans, amongst the Romans, amongst other peoples. 
And according to this, if they ever reunite, they would destroy the world, attempt to destroy the world. And indeed, in the Second World War, we had Germany under Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, and we had Italy under Mussolini from the fascists, and they attempted to unite or to combine action between with each other, and they uh, did bring a disaster upon him, mankind. Aesop. When Aesop was born, he was given his name. Aesop means already made, made, already complete, precociously developed. He was also reddish. And the word used in Hebrew is admoni. This name, reddish, uh, connoting red hair, is also applied to King David, 1 Samuel 16, 12, 17, 42. So therefore, according to the Bible, both Aesop and King David were, had reddish type hair. And according to the sages, this, this hair, this, uh, this appearance of theirs indicated uh, an in a tendency to, to shed blood. But they said that, uh, that David had, uh, was described as, red, as reddish but with, uh, with good eyes. He applied this tendency, this trait of his, in a positive direction, whereas Aesop did not. And we find Aesop later amongst the Germans. We find uh, uh, Esuvus, or the god Esus, in Gaul and uh, in Western Germany, and, and Ross Mata, his consort, his, wo his, wo his woman, who also means the red one, the magnificent red one, in that area. And uh, according to uh, students of, of mythology, he, Esus became, or permuted, permutated into Asa, into Odin, and Odin. Or known, also known as Watum, he is a aspect of Edom. Wadden was known as uh, Koz. Another name for Wadden was Koz, K-O-Z. And this name was a name that the Edomites had used for their god in Edomaya. Uh, you can look this up in the encyclopedia. We're not uh, telling you things which are far-fetched, which cannot be checked. These are known facts, registered facts. So they had both Odin, Odin and Esau had the same name. And uh, according to our understanding, this name is actually a permutation, a, a dialectical permutation, both derived from the Hebrew words for Esau. At all events... Aesop was also known as Edom, he, that means he was red, he was red and hairy. We also find the red and hairy peoples amongst the early Turks, even though the Turks are not, are not, according to our understanding, representative of Edom. They may have had Edomites amongst them. Also, they came from an area in, in Turkestan and Persia, which is also known as Temenun, or Tem, which may be related to Teman, the son of, of Esau. So this is also something worth noting. The, the Khazars, the Khazars were uh, people in southern Russia, descended from the Ten Tribes, a, a section of the Ten Tribes, so this, from the tribes of uh, Simon and Manasseh. They converted to Judaism, and they had a powerful kingdom, and they were neighbored. They neighbored the, the kingdom of Byzantine. Byzantine was an offshoot of, of the Roman Empire. It was centered on, on Constantinople. Constantinople was later conquered by the Turks, the Turkish peoples, and renamed Istanbul. They came in and they conquered all that area, but their basic population remained the same. They just changed their language, changed their religion, and they intermarried a little bit with the new Turkish peoples who came in from Central Asia, but basically they remained the same. So their kingdom had been referred to by the Khazars as the Kingdom of Edom. So that is also worth noting. Also amongst the Russians there may be elements from Edom. We have uh, indications of this. Also the Russians, the very name Rus, Russia. Rus, European dialects, can mean Edom, red. They were known as reds under the communists. The communists were called red. The Red Empire, the Red Menace, we all remember that from the old days of the Cold War. The reds were communists, and the communists were agents of, of, of Russia. And Russia too may have elements from Edom within its constituent ethnos within the peoples who comprise it. 
But we do not say that most Russians are like that. Maybe only a very few are, but they are there and they have an influence. We have written books about, about this. These books are of value. It's worth acquiring them. We go into more details on, upon all these subjects and additional subjects. And, uh, we also find the Edomites amongst the Israelites. They intermix with them. There are also possibly Edomites amongst the Jews. There are people who claim that. We do not think that, that uh, there are that many, but they could exist. And also among the ten tribes we find Edomites. Edomites are actually instrumental in resettling a portion of the ten tribes in the West. We already noticed the remark of the Samis that he found Phoenician descendants from Edomites in Britain, and they were there. And we find uh, the aspects of this uh, anti-Jewish, anti uh, anti judaic anti-biblical elements within the British nation. Together with Israelite ones, we should, uh, for example, we should uh, note that uh, Chamberlain was uh, the uh, a minister, an important governmental minister in the, in the British administration, uh, and also the the Prime Minister of Britain in 1939. He was. Uh, he, he was involved in the White Paper, which limited the migrations of Jews to the to what was in Palestine, which was in under British control. And he said, if I had to choose between the Arabs and the Jews, I would choose the Arabs. And later, he procrastinated. He was he believed in appeasement towards Adolf Hitler, and he, in effect, uh, believed in peace in their time. And he gave Hitler. Czechoslovakia, or he did not uh, resist Hitler when Hitler took over Czechoslovakia. It was then Czechoslovakia, and that led to the Second World War, and after the Second World War began, and uh, they, the init initially the Germans won, they, they conquered, uh, conquered Poland, and then they conquered Holland and, 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 and Norway and Denmark, and then the, and, uh, France, and there were elements within the British government who wanted to appease Hitler, to, to come to terms with Hitler, not continue the war. And uh, Church and uh, Chamberlain was one of them. Is uh, together with this appeasing element, but he was overruled by Churchill and by the other British ministers and also the British public. Did, were not did not want this, and they wanted to go ahead and wage war with Hitler. But nevertheless, this element existed, it was there, and they did have public support. And so to an air time, we find amongst uh, Israelite nations, including uh, the USA and Canada and European nations, we find groups that are against the state of Israel. Uh, some of them are very powerful, very influential. Sometimes they seem to have the majority behind them. Ireland is often very anti-Jewish, very anti-Israel in its foreign policies. And there are other examples of this. So here we find, we find elements from Esau, from Edom, within the 12 tribes of Esau. And we should be aware of this. That doesn't mean you have to go around accusing everyone of become, being an Edomite. Okay? Because <laughs> if you, we start along that track, there's no end to it. People make mistakes. People are mistaken. People can do... Uh, can repent, people can go along the track, the wrong track, and even if they are Edomites, it doesn't mean Edomites were wrong. Edomites in history, also in biblical terms, we find Edomites who were great people. Job was probably from Edom, he was a great person, he was close to God Almighty. He gave us a book of Job, which is an important book in biblical philosophy. There are Edomites who did good things and contributed much to the Israelite nation, to the whole of humanity. So we're not saying that they're all bad, but they exist, and they may have tendencies that are negative, and they may have control here and there of Israelite nations. So this is, a, and we're talking about overall tendencies, so this is something we have to look out for, to be aware of, and to do what the God Almighty wants us to do, do according to what our Israelite ancestry should do require of us to do, and may the God of Israel guide us. Thank you.